18th century farmhouse overlooking some of the loveliest countryside in Wiltshire. This is the home of the guitarist Julian Bream and the setting for this series of television masterclasses held in a converted stable that Bream now uses as a recital room, a place for table tennis and a workshop for a guitar maker. Here before an audience of young guitarists, he works with advanced students and young professionals from Britain and abroad on some of the most challenging pieces in the guitar repertory. In this final program, the music has rather personal associations for Julian Bream. Benjamin Britten's Nocturnal after John Dowland was written especially for him, and he gave the first performance at the 1964 Albra Festival. It's one of many works reflecting Britten's preoccupation with sleep and the world of dreams, and is an extensive set of variations on a theme by the Elizabethan composer John Dowland, a theme that doesn't emerge clearly until the very end of the work. Two guitarists take part in tonight's programme, Robert Hoy from Canvey Island in Essex and Kenji Sano from Japan. At 19, Robert Hoy is the youngest player in the series. He began the guitar when he was nine and later attended the Royal College of Music, where he also studied the clarinet. At his first public recital at the age of 16, his programme included this difficult nocturnal by Britain. Kenji Sano was trained in Japan before coming to London in 1974 to study both guitar and lute at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. There, he was awarded a special prize, and last year he gained a diploma with distinction. The piece we're going to study in this programme is Nocturnal, after John Darland, by Benjamin Britten. In form, the piece is a set of variations and passacalia on a theme of John Darland. And as the title suggests, the feeling, or overall feeling of the piece, um, is to do with sleep and night. In fact, the song that Britain uses as a theme has the words, Come heavy sleep, the image of true death, and close up these my weary weeping eyes, whose spring of tears does stop my vital breath and tears my heart with sorrows, sighs, swollen cries. Come and possess my tired, thought-worn soul that living dies, till thou on me be stole. This sets very much the mood of the very opening variation, which I'll get Robert to play now.
stop there and just go over those two variations. Um, the last one was done very well. I thought it was a little bit quick and a little bit frenetic, but the composer has marked very agitated, and I must say that was quite an agitated performance. And very good, incidentally. There were one or two points of rhythm were a little bit astray, but by and large, I liked it. The opening, I thought, was a little bit disappointing, because somehow the quality on the fourth string was rather tinny. I don't know whether it's your thumbnail, which is a... It's a bit long, isn't it? Um, or would you like it as long as I that? feel it's uh, more comfortable that way, actually. Yes, but the actual um, quality of sound was rather... not particularly uh, good. Right. And I think the first note of a piece of this length, which is, after all, nearly 15 minutes long, has got to have just a little bit of presence about it. It mustn't necessarily be loud, but it's got to have quality. Just like that. You see how that just... It has an impact. It's not a loud sound. And so often this is a problem for guitarists that when they're playing fairly loudly, the, the, the quality of sound is pretty good. But it's when they play softly that, that, that it, the sound loses its wholesome quality, you know, it loses focus. And I just wonder whether you've got quite the right stroke there with your thumb. Uh, it's a bit sort of, it's a, a bit like that, instead of, you see, there should be no sound of plucking. It should be pure note. Let me do that. Yeah, but there's not so much presence in the sound. Listen, listen to me. I've played as quiet as that, and you'll know that there's more impact, isn't there? It's better. Right, carry on. So that should be a little more characterful, particularly that tiri dum. Look, look. phrase that and that part of it is particularly unusual so let's make a tiny bit of character there by giving it a little extra tweak off that string no we're not aware that we've, you've begun the piece we thought you were tuning up there give it a little bit more kind of give a bit more left hand a little a little vibrato just to give it a bit of gin and fizz quality of sound in all those notes that I've played, which is very important. This is the first statement of this piece, and there must be absolute uniformity in the texture of sound. So that I don't get quieter on the second phrase, but I almost come up a bit, you see. first note, but not too loud. That's better. Do you move on a bit, then take it back? No. See, when you move on in this sort of tempo rubato, you've then got to pull back. Or if you yes. pull back, you've then got to make it up somewhere along the line, you see. So you go, forward, back. And it has a lovely poetry, you see. What you take away, you give it back. And 
we are not doing this at all mechanically. You know, we're not dividing the notes up. We're just feeling what's right. And that's really what poetry is largely about, I think. Good. Let's just do that and go into the second variation. marked little dots over there, but I think that's a piano, a pianist's uh, indication of, 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 of uh, texture or attack. I think he wants real, on the guitar it sounds better, just natural. Because every time you pluck a guitar, it's a little dot on the thing, really, isn't it? to establish this change of mood and if you go too quickly uh, people are just sort of don't know where they are you know very determined Terrifically good, and you give yourself no chance because it's breakneck speed that you're doing it at. <laughs> when you get those arpeggios, you see, look, we must have a mezzo for you there, you see, yes. and a little bit of crescendos in the middle of them, and really that must be as loud as you can, and that's soft again, and that even softer, and that even softer, you see. So you get three levels of dynamics from those last arpeggios. <laughs> Go for it. Don't rush. Take a breath. You know, when you're going so beautifully up to there, then you get this difficult bit. I know it's hell. But if you give yourself a bit of a breath, yeah. just relax a little bit, you'll get all the notes. And you know, it won't be too slow, I can assure you. Good. that that's two beats there. All the way through here, when you go, you see, give yeah. yourself plenty of time. See? Everywhere that you've been rushing.
go on to the third one. Can I stop you one sec? The four strings just a little flat. And uh, for my money, that's a bit quick too. <laughs> you see, because each variation grows into the next one. You see, yes. so I got. Pretty good. It says restless at the beginning of the variation, and it was pretty restless. And I still thought it was a little bit quick. And once again, the quality of the bass was not up to the quality of the treble. When I play, that bass has a real presence, you see. Whereas when you play, it, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't compel us, you see. Right. And I do think that you've really got to push that bass line out a bit. Could you just go from about there somewhere? I don't know whether it's your nail or something. It's a little ticking there. It could be my nail. It's actually yeah. a little bit long. Yeah. <laughs> Really build up that thing right to the top of that phrase. Go from here. Thank you. 
bit to do with that, Robert. Um, a lot of it's very good, but quite a bit of it wants to be rethought, I think, in terms yes. of uh, speed and phrasing, and in some senses, uh, dynamically, too. So I think we'll just um, f finish here with you, if you don't mind, and, and then uh, Kenji will carry on. Thank you. Yeah. Kenji, would you like to go, f where would you like to go from, the beginning? I think we've had a lot of the beginning. Would you like to go from halfway through to the end? Yes. Would that upset you? No. Well, that's all right. It's all right. I mean, it's very strange to start in the middle of something, but in a sense we'll complete the work, you see, this way. going to variation four now. It's a very imaginative and unusual way of playing it, and quite good. But I think we've got to stick to the composer's rhythmic framework a little more. I mean, two. I think you must learn this. Uh, yeah, but that's, look, that's terribly loud for the beginning. It's mezzo forte. You've got to be full of suspense. No, that wasn't clear. Gotta be quick, look. Very good. No, that's too loud. Look, do it with the fingers here. That's right. Yeah, I think it should be on. Can you not do it on the first string? A longer string length. That's better. Too slow. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Sounds as though you've 
fell down the mountain. What's that mountain in in, uh, in Japan? Fuji? Is that... <laughs> yeah, it's even though you came down the whole damn lot then. <laughs> Great, but I, I can appreciate that. It's difficult, even to fall down a mountain. Now look, I think we've got to start a little bit quicker, you know, it's very effective, but... Really nasty. That's it. Go. Let's do that run again. See, don't start so slow and don't end so quick. This is the secret of that. Start a little quicker and end a little slower, and you'll get it beautifully. Here we go. Just sit, look up at all those lamps there, look. Tone cut for a change. Crescendo. Cha cha cha. I 
that's pretty good actually. But it's got to be more macabre. Do you know what the word macabre is? More ghost-like, a little mm. more diabolic. Okay, here we go. Should let me play the end. Got the idea? Yeah. Make the tune stand out, see? <laughs> but it's so very, very, very eerie. Don't you find that? That's how it's got to be done. Yeah. Right, next one. Are you good at harmonics? Are you doing well? Oh, so <laughs> let's... We'll, we'll wish you luck on that. Here we go. I think that's too, sounds too much like Brahms. You see, bah, 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 bah. we don't need to do that. Quick arpeggio. Thank you. 
Can we just stop there a minute? Because that was a lot of very, very good playing, and I didn't want to interrupt you because I thought the Passacaglia, the last big piece, was done really magnificently. There were just one or two moments when you didn't move on, you know, the piece tended to pull back, and you've got to be very careful in this piece to keep it moving. You mustn't rush it, but one mustn't pull back too much. And a, a typical example was uh, after the arpeggio, after this... exciting. Uh, and when you do the theme, 